Us at Sandy Cooper, for those who may or may not be familiar with our programs or really where we've come in the last two or three years, uh, we wanted to kind of just give a little bit of a background. In 2009, our board of directors approved an energy efficiency blueprint, so to speak, that was designed to significantly reduce our customers' energy consumption. Um, back the fourth quarter of 2009, that program or that measure was a, branded as a reduce use program and directed to re reach out to approximately all 160,000 of our, re our retail customers. Where we are today, we're obviously three, three and a half years into the program and each year annually we evaluate various measures and components of our program to determine what's effective from a, both a cost effective standpoint and energy efficiency standpoint. And so with that, um, this past year in the fourth quarter, we identified a new measure, uh, which is why we're here today, the heat pump water heater measure to replace our existing uh, standard uh, storage water heater rebate that we really had problems with gaining traction with our customers. And so we looked at a new revamped offer, and that's why we've uh, come to decide on this measure and really bring this today. Um, as we've told a lot of our uh, trade allies, both on whether they be in insulation, weatherization, or uh, HVAC contractors. A lot of times, you know, with what we're doing and the initiatives we're launching, we aren't at Sandy Cooper necessarily this, this subject matter expert. So as much as we can align with the, the consultants and the staff that we have to help us with these programs, we we try to extend that out to bring those with the, indeed the expertise. And that's why we have uh, Josh Brown here with us today. Um, he's a senior program associate at Fluid. He's been involved in various heat pump water heater field studies and market transformation programs for Bonneville Power Administration and the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance since 2011. And currently he works on NEEA Smart, Ener Smart Water Heater Initiative managing the outreach and training to trade allies. So with that being said, I want to turn it over to Josh to uh, to cover our presentation, and we'll have quest time for questions at the end, or if we could filter those uh, as they come up um, at, throughout the presentation, we can definitely uh, answer those as well. So, Great. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, like uh, Grayson said, uh, if you guys have any questions, I think currently uh, we have your guys' line unmuted, so um, we'll kind of keep this free-flowing um, as long as there's not too much uh, noise interference. So if any of you have questions, uh, during this presentation, just feel free and kind of jump in, and uh, we'll try and address those as we move along. Uh, so like uh, Grayson said, I currently work on a few different heat pump water heater programs, and uh, today we'll be discussing uh, some of the heat pump water heater technology benefits, uh, go over the installation best practices, and all of those things listed there, and then the uh, program requirements that Sandy Cooper has um, outlined along with the rebate form that they have and the quality assurance uh, component that they have uh, tied with their program. So the technology benefits, uh, heat pump water heaters uh, at their most basic are um, almost two times as efficient as ordinary electric water heaters. Uh, so uh, heat pump water heaters work uh, much like a refrigerator in reverse, so they pull in warmth from the uh, ambient air in the space that they're installed in to heat the water. And typically, uh, a residential electric bill, uh, the water heating component of that, uh, represents about 15 to 25 percent of a homeowner's electric bill. So by saving up to uh, 50 percent, or, or by reducing those costs by up to 50 percent, there's quite a bit of substantial savings there, uh, estimated at around uh, $250 per year for an average uh, homeowner and with average use. So Sandy Cooper uh, has a rebate, and the, uh, and the offer is $400 for a qualified Energy Star heat pump water heating unit. And so how this fits into a, a payback example, uh, you can see here on the left side there is the standard electric uh, water heaters. And over the course of a 10 year, uh, you can see that the uh, life cycle costs would be uh, close to $4,000. Whereas with a, a heat pump water heater, the upfront cost is a little bit more, but with the Sandy Cooper rebate and a federal tax credit that is currently available, uh, the 
overall 10-year cost of that uh, heat pump water heater would be uh, uh, quite a bit less than what a standard electric water heater would cost. Um, the installation costs are not included on this example as they will likely uh, remain constant in non-ducted uh, applications, which is a uh, requirement that we'll cover uh, later on in this presentation. So there are some installation best practices uh, that we have identified uh, through various uh, programs that we've been involved in. Uh, Sandy Cooper only provides rebates for heat pump water heaters in uh, unconditioned in, uh, spaces, such as the one that's uh, shown here in this image. Heat pump water heaters, for the most part, depending upon manufacturer, of course, but they require at least 1,000 cubic feet of, uh, of ambient air in the space that they're installed in. So that is uh, a quite a bit of space that is required, but this allows for proper airflow and maintenance of the heat pump water heater. Uh, heat pump water heaters are slightly larger than uh, their, their counterparts, that are their standard electric counterparts, uh, so they do require a little bit more space around the unit as well. Uh, manufacturers, like I mentioned, uh, do have different requirements um, uh, for their unit, so make sure and check with each of those requirements before installing. And just to hit a little bit back on this picture here, you can see that a space like this, a big garage, uh, would meet that 1,000 uh, cubic feet requirements. And the reason for that in this picture, even though the uh, heat pump water heater is installed in uh, kind of like a little small closet there, uh, it is open uh, to the uh, overall space of the garage. If there was a door on that uh, closet there, uh, it would need to be louvered to allow for proper airflow to the heat pump water heater. Heat pump water heaters uh, have some sizing guidelines uh, outlined here. Um, these, the numbers represented here are the first hour ratings um, associated uh, with, like for instance, a three bedroom, two bath home would require a first hour rating of 70 gallons. Some additional installation uh, tips. Uh, heat pump water heaters um, do generate a little bit of noise and can generate uh, some vibration. So when installing a heat pump water heater uh, in a space like a, like a garage near a primary uh, living area of a home or a sleeping area of a home, it's a good strategy to install some vibration or dampening mounts as needed. Uh, these help minimize uh, those, uh, those kind of unwanted byproducts of a heat pump water heater. Uh, when removing the condensate, the condensate must be terminated into an existing drain. Uh, so some examples of an existing drain would be a floor drain, a uh, washing machine drain, or even if there's a uh, wash sink uh, that is available, um, you can terminate the condensation into that. Uh, in some scenarios, uh, you might need to use a condensate drain to remove uh, the condensation. Uh, and if a drain is not available, it must be terminated outside the home itself. Uh, when installing a, a specific uh, heat pump water heaters um, that have a uh, unused duct attachment point, so uh, certain brands of um, heat pump water heaters will have an exhaust port um, um, that would um, uh, essentially be flush with the top portion of the heat pump water heater um, in an effort to prevent homeowners from stacking up items on top of that and, reduce, and limiting the airflow, uh, the exhaust airflow of the heat pump water heater, it's good to install a uh, duct attachment point. Uh, this is really only applicable in uh, one specific manufacturer uh, uh, heat pump water heater. And as always, follow local building codes and permitting requirements. Heat pump water heaters also have some additional maintenance requirements that differs from a standard electric tank, the first and most obvious being uh, the filter. Uh, all uh, heat pump water heater manufacturers um, have different uh, cleaning uh, recommendations for the filter in reference to the time uh, between cleanings. Um, when installing a heat pump water heater in a garage that the homeowner has a wood shop in, it's a good practice to recommend to the homeowner uh, to check the filter uh, more frequently than what the manufacturer recommends uh, because likely that filter will become uh, clogged a lot quicker than, uh, than just a garage that's used for parking cars in. Uh, also, with heat pump water heaters, the condensate drain um, needs to be inspected and 
uh, if it is blocked or restricted, must be cleaned. Uh, so make sure that the homeowner understands where the condensate drain uh, terminates at and how they can prevent any blockage or also clear out any blockage of that condensate drain. And then as always uh, with uh, standard electric tanks, there's some additional maintenance that is required. Um, those uh, carry over to heat pump water heaters as well. Homeowner education is a, a big aspect of uh, heat pump water heater uh, installations. Um, most homeowners are not familiar with being able to interact with uh, their water heater. Uh, all heat pump water heaters have a control panel on it and they have different operating modes uh, associated with um, uh, the unit. So making sure the homeowner understands how to adjust these settings, what each of these settings means, uh, and then also how to obviously adjust the temperature. Uh, personally, my water heater is just a, it's a gas uh, tanked water heater and it just has a dial on it that says cold and hot. Uh, so I don't really have any idea of what actual temperature setting mine is set at. But with heat pump water heaters, the homeowner can dial it into a specific setting uh, as they so choose. And then also uh, make sure the homeowner understands that with increasing the temperature setting that they're also increasing the risk of scalding hazard. Uh, and then leaving, of course, behind the manufacturer operation instructions uh, with the homeowner and then also the installer contact uh, information on the unit uh, is also a good practice. So I hinted a little bit about the different operating modes uh, associated with heat pump water heaters. Uh, these are four uh, common um, modes found across different manufacturers. The first being efficiency or economy. Uh, what this setting means is that it is only going to use the heat pump uh, to heat the water. And this essentially will maximize the energy efficiency and savings. Uh, and it, can, it will do so um, at the cost of, or at the, at the, uh, the drawback to it is, is that the recovery might be a little bit slower uh, depending upon the ambient air temperature in the space that it is installed in. Um, and so by the next setting then is auto and hybrid. Uh, this is the setting that most uh, manufacturers have defaulted um, uh, on their units and this will be the uh, setting that you should leave it at um, when installing. Uh, it's ideal for daily use. It will use the internal logic of the uh, heat pump water heater to uh, choose uh, which, uh, how to heat the hot water, basically. So it will primarily first use the heat pump um, to heat the water. And then if there's a uh, large enough hot water draw, it will then also use the uh, electric elements that are installed on the <coughs> excuse me, heat pump water heater uh, to keep up with the homeowner's demand. So this will actually uh, help aid in a quicker recovery. Uh, of the hot water, whereas the efficiency economy mode will, uh, won't be able to do that. It will strictly just use that heat pump uh, to heat the water. Electric and heater um, mode uh, is essentially just that. So it just turns off the uh, heat pump itself and it will only use the electric elements to heat the water. This is the least energy efficient operating mode and uh, it's really uh, discouraged. Uh, we'd like to see discouraged uh, homeowner use of this mode. Um, some examples of when this would be a good mode would be if, the, if there's an issue with the heat pump uh, functioning at all and uh, the homeowner is waiting on service of their heat pump, this is a really good option so that they can still receive and uh, have hot water uh, uh, while they're waiting for that repair to be made. Uh, a fourth mode that is not as commonly found on all uh, manufacturers, non manufacturers heat pump water heaters is the vacation and timer. Um, this will allow a homeowner to uh, save energy when, a, when away from home so they can uh, set this and program it for a certain period of time and it will um, optimize the performance of the, the heat pump water heater to not run as frequently uh, due to standby losses and uh, save a little bit more energy when they're not using it. But again, this is not available on all models. So there are some obviously requirements uh, in participating with the uh, with Sandy Cooper and receiving the $400 rebate. So the home must be separately metered and receive electrical service from Sandy Cooper. The home must be single family construction or a unit in a multifamily building that has its own heating, cooling, and hot water systems separate from other units. Uh, the home must be at least five years old and the home must be all electric excluding hybrid heat pumps and gas fireplaces. 
Some additional measure requirements are that the heat pump water heater must uh, be Energy Star qualified. And if you'd like to look up a list of Energy Star qualified heat pump water heaters, there is a list available at energystar.gov. It must also be installed in a uh, unconditioned attached space, so much like the image that we uh, discussed earlier that I showed earlier. Uh, that would be a perfect uh, suitable installation space. Uh, it also must be installed in accordance with the manufacturer specification. So there are some requirements uh, for participating tr trade allies, uh, the first being uh, carrying certain levels of insurance uh, that are detailed here, as well as some workers' compensation requirements and uh, general automotive liability insurance coverage. Uh, Sandy Cooper must also receive a, a copy of the residential plumbing license and also a uh, uh, verified completion of a manufacturer's training. Uh, certain manufacturers do not have uh, requirements around manufacturer's training, so make sure and check with uh, each of the heat pump water heater manufacturers that you're installing to verify whether or not you need to attend one before installing or not. So the rebate form um, is detailed here. Um, it's fairly simple. Instructions are outlined at the top of this form. And then uh, you must provide your trade ally information there and then the homeowner's information as well. Uh, the equipment can be outlined uh, on this lower section here. <clears throat> and please include um, the serial number uh, and the model number of the unit that you do install. This portion of the uh, rebate uh, form um, asks for a little bit more uh, information regarding the uh, installation location where the heat pump water heater is installed. And actually, the uh, important part here is to outline how much uh, installation room size, um, or I guess the, the room size of the, um, of the room where the unit was installed at, so, the, so we can verify the overall cubic feet of the uh, space and then the overall uh, installation clearances that are associated with uh, the installation as well. And then go through this installation checklist here on the bottom. Quality assurance installations uh, will ensure, will be performed and will ensure that the uh, installation is in compliance with not only Sandy Cooper's requirements for the rebate, but also the manufacturer uh, specifications. Deviations uh, will require remediation. And uh, Sandy Cooper, if you have any questions about that, they can answer uh, questions about how that will look like. Uh, Non-compliance with installation requirements and or quality assurance inspections may result in suspension or permanent removal from participation. So that is the last, oh, sorry, one more slide, I lied. Uh, so we will invite uh, contractors to attend the inspections. Uh, this will be done via phone and email. Uh, we'll provide you with the uh, time and date and location of those inspections. Um, during the QA inspection, uh, Sandy Cooper will be evaluating the data accuracy on the form, overall installation quality, and homeowner education as well. So before we end, real quick, I wanted to provide, um, you know, I'm up here in the Northwest, um, and we've been running a, a few different uh, rebate programs for various utilities here uh, in the region. And um, we've seen some, uh, some successes uh, from contractors that I wanted to detail a little bit. So um, we've, we've trained over about 300 uh, contractors, and out of those 300, there are about 100 currently actively participating in installing uh, heat pump water heaters and receiving rebates from utilities and our programs as well. And uh, some of the differentiating factors between the, the more successful uh, and active contractors uh, to the ones that are not so active um, are actively promoting uh, this technology during the bid process with customers. So uh, when going into a home and bidding on work, most customers and consumers aren't necessarily going to be asking and requesting a heat pump water heater because they aren't familiar with the technology. So the contractors that have really uh, uh, learned how to uh, um, promote this technology to customers uh, show the payback uh, period and kind of break that uh, those costs down and uh, overcoming the initial kind of sticker shock hurdle um, and uh, describing to a homeowner of how they overall over the course of the life of the of their water heater will save more money with a heat pump water heater uh, those contractors have been really successful another aspect of that is uh, um, possibly partnering uh, with the utility 
uh, or uh, doing some direct mail on your own uh, to customers um, to promote this technology. Uh, contractors that have done that in our region have been uh, experienced uh, quite a spike in uh, uh, inquiries from uh, potential customers. And the other, the third thing I guess I would like to highlight would be uh, educating the rest of your staff around this technology. So for those of, that couldn't attend today, uh, and Grayson had hinted at this a little bit, but we are recording this presentation, uh, so we'll, we'll make that available to you. But making sure that the uh, other uh, contractors or people who uh, interact with your customers are aware that you are participating in this program and can offer consumers or customers a $400 rebate from Sandy Cooper. Uh, so when you do get those uh, phone calls and people just asking about uh, general questions about water heaters, they can also uh, kind of be that first line of interaction with the potential customer. So that is all I have. Uh, Grayson, and is there anything else that you have, or would we can open it up for questions now as well? Yeah, I, I think we can open it up for questions. I didn't see any pop up on the um, be typed in, but um, I don't know if Amanda or Jill or Herman, if you're on that end, if, um, if there are any questions um, that have come up. I'll go ahead and, and just pose the question. You know, um, and one thing that I'd like to know is, do any of you already have any experience with these types of units? Have any of you, you know, installed them, or are you familiar with them installed? That's, I'm sorry, I really didn't want to able to make that out. I don't know if you're far away from the phone receiver or I've not. turned my back to the speaker. I'm sorry. Um, we have we have several contractors in the room here with us, and uh, two or three of them have had some experience uh, in installing these. Uh, based on what you've seen, do you have any immediate questions? Are there any is there anything relative to the technology that you've got some questions about? Do you see any barriers in terms of? you know, how it would maybe restrict or inhibit participation. Um, it's, it's already been mentioned, the whole sticker shop issue. Um, but, you know, if, if what was it, a $700 remediation, there's our, our rebate and, and the federal government uh, rebate is, uh, can help to offset a significant amount of that putting the install or the purchase cost down in the realm of essentially standard installation. Um, I got a question. All right. Uh, is there somebody who will come out and check the Sandy Cooper? Yeah. So that the qualified for the three F four minutes and the function check on the to get the rebate from the end. You'll have to the question was, will I have to pull a permit and uh, have a local code inspection? And um, you know, you can, you know, all of our programs require, whether it's this or heat pump installs or anything, that you comply with whatever the local code requirements are. So will that keep them from getting a rebate? Will they need a copy of the inspection form? The question is, will they need a copy of the uh, inspector uh, inspection form, code inspector inspection form, in order to get the uh, the rebate. So, Grayson, are you uh, able to answer that one for them? I'll have to follow up on that with them. That um, that hasn't come up uh, really for our rebate. The only thing we had really specified is um, an application, and and now this heat pump water heater form as well as a proof of purchase showing uh, model and serial number so we could verify with Energy Star. Um, as Herman mentioned, uh, complying with all local codes, um, that's standard across all of our installs, but um, that question hasn't come up and that's... Okay. Bobby, has a question. The actual install of the heat pump water heaters. Um, you said earlier that they can be installed in a closet with a louvered door. 
but if you have a louver door and you calculate the free area on that, you're not going to be getting nowhere near the airflow you would if you didn't have that louver door in place. And if it has to be in a thousand cubic foot area in order for the airflow, wouldn't that kind of cut your airflow in half, if not more? Yeah, so uh, with, with that requirement, I mean, we, we, I think, and Sandy Cooper will probably defer uh, to the manufacturer requirements around that. So certain manufacturers do uh, specify uh, in their installation specifications um, the, the room size requirements and whether the uh, heat pump water heater can be installed in a uh, smaller space as long as that uh, door, space has a louver door or not. So I think that uh, deferring to the manufacturer uh, is kind of what uh, Sandy Cooper, I think, would hope. Is that my correct, Grayson? Yes, that's correct. Okay. You'd want to protect the warranty though. You know, you wouldn't want to do anything in the install that would undermine somehow, you know, any relief to the customer, or you might have if there were any warranty issues. Question on the, the rebate problem. Yes, sir. First part, as far as um, which you would, would specify about the homeowner receiving the the applicate or receiving the rebate, and on on our application, which we'll we'll post and as um, you know after this session, whether you know it's today or a week or two from now, depending upon who is indeed um, interested in signing up with our program, we'll go through and you'll have access to all our applications, which are available on the web, but. Um, Essentially, the application, there's certain portions um, that the homeowner or completes, and then there's one section. Really, this one, this program is pretty straightforward. But, um, when we get into calculated measures, we ask the, that the trade ally uh, complete that section of the rebate application. But it's a, a one-page a one page application front and back, and really it's required that the homeowner sign it and the trade ally, which in this case, um, would take probably, I mean, I, I would estimate less than two minutes to complete as far as just selecting what is indeed and, and verifying that. But the homeowner is required to uh, submit all of that, um, or if if you have it all, either one, uh, which would ever speed the process up. Um, and, you know, with, with our energy advisors or anybody in the room, um, you know, Having a, a key point of contact, maybe just in your service territory where you're at, um, you know, they, those can be sent to them as well. Um, you know, via fax or email, whichever you know is preferred or uh, best for your business. And Grayson, I'm reading the the typed question in here too, and it seems like maybe the the question also had a component where it was asking where the rebate could be paid to. So would the rebate go to the contractor, or would it go back to the homeowner, or is there an option there? The, the only, all the all of our rebates are paid uh, back directly to the homeowner. We don't have any um, any of our measures that are paid back to the contractor at this point. Okay. So that would just be something that would be uh, communicated up front to the to the to the homeowner when uh, they're weighing the option of maybe this technology over another, and um, along with you know like we brought up the federal tax credits and uh, really communicating that to them. Um, typically. Uh, once we receive all of the information, whether it be uh, you know the application, the, the water heater form, and and verification um, of the model and serial number, our, our rebates are running anywhere from four to six weeks. A lot of times, you know, during this season coming up, it's it's probably averages around four. Since this is a pretty straightforward uh, measure and not as ca uh, complex as some of our other, um, I anticipate this would be much f uh, quicker and and. Uh, uh, faster turnaround, which um, we have committed to the homeowners that it would be between four and six weeks uh, at the at the longest uh, period of time. But um, yeah, 
So there's a, a follow-up question that was typed in. It's, uh, can't, can't the homeowner uh, assign the rebate to the contractor? It, if, if the homeowner was indeed interested in assigning that, that I mean, we, we at Sandy Cooper would not be involved in that. That would just be something um, that they work out um, with you all or, um, you know, really on our end, our rebates are paid. And, and tied in our programs directly to all the contra or to the customers. Excuse me. Um, I don't. I can't speak for some of the agreements that maybe homeowners make with contractors um, on all of our other measures, but um, you know, that may or may not be occurring. Um, but I'm not really sure. But again, that would all be um, separated from our our business process and, and where we're allocating our rebates. Okay, so another question that was uh, just typed in was, is there going to be a big push for this program, or will a customer uh, just fall into it? So I guess just kind of, you know, come across it not knowing really about the details of it. Right. Cur currently, right now, we don't have anything scheduled, which is part of the reason we wanted to get everyone together um, and really gauge um, from you all that are actually installing uh, this technology or interested in, um, you know, brainstorming and coming to with a with a plan that's, you know, both cost effective but yet reaches out um, in a way. In the past, we've run bill stuffers, um, billboards. So we do a lot on social media, uh, radio ads as well. Um, the communication channels that you know are really most obvious are what we've really tackled. A lot of you know, with, with cuts in our budget, we've looked a lot to social media, but we will um, be pushing a lot of this um, information in, in various series. We have bill stuffers already scheduled to go out. Um, I don't have the calendar in front of me, but we, we have had one in the past go out for water heaters. So um, really a lot of the obvious is what we run. But if there's any recommendations or um, key channels that um, you all have found successful, um, we are more than willing to look at that and uh, send that back to our corporate communication staff to have them uh, follow up with it. Okay, and another question that came in uh, was, will Santee Cooper provide plumber, the, a plumber with literature to give the homeowners? And literature is, I um, just need to specify that a little bit more. I, what we have currently right now, um, you know, really driven to the web. We do have the, the handout that hopefully everyone got um, for a kind of a quick reference guide that will uh, basically give them, you know, at a high level overview of uh, the, the key points uh, with this new install. But, um, you know, we have customer information that's put out on our web. And if they indeed want more information about this particular measure or all of our other programs, um, we can provide that for them as well. We have, um, uh, resource guides that uh, we currently have out on the web and um, under our reduced use program. So for those that haven't been out there and, and leave today, um, you know, we have a page dedicated for this uh, measure in particular along with our solar water heater uh, rebate. And so um, familiarize yourself with that. And then if there's uh, certain materials that you, you feel would be beneficial, we can look at having those printed or distributed as well. So the, the follow-up comment on that and clarification is um, specific to like payback period info, um, like a ready, set, save brochure, tax credit info, those types of things. Yeah, we as far as savings and literature, um, like the payback example we have, um, a, a lot of our measures in the past we've had um, pushback from our legal department in, in setting that. and. Uh, setting the expectation of the homeowner just because there are case by cases, but um, if it is something that we would look at, it would have to be individually customizing um, with any one of you all to say, um, you know, really whether you're communicating to the homeowner or um, or one of your other uh, one of your other employees in your business, we can um, look at having something set up to customize. But as far as a mass production of uh, payback, uh, we we typically have in the past have not. Um, push that as far as um, a mass push to all of our customers because of legal pushback that we have and as far as guaranteeing savings or guaranteeing um, payback.
Okay, well, I don't see, are there any other questions uh, anyone has? Uh, are you going to be pushing the program bundled with other programs? I know you are familiar with BQ and the other. I don't know if they can speak in there, but now we're still on. We use Beacon Scores uh, for those folks who want to use their loan resources. Now, that loan vehicle is not a requirement for any of our programs. It's just a resource. So that it, um, you know, quite often, especially with things like heat pumps and things like that, it's hard for people sometimes to, you know, come out of a hit with five, six grand. You know, the same is true in an issue like this. If they can see that uh, they can finance this kind of a, a purchase and also uh, have a, a reduced cost to operate and whatnot, uh, then that that is. Uh, Probably that would be part of the market. It's a package. I guess um, ultimately what I'm asking is if you have three or four different niches and a client elects to do three out of four, they get a, a bonus mm -hmm. rebate incentive. It's going to be $100. Yeah. It's a hundred dollar incentive if they, if they elect to do two or more. Uh, I mean, initially. $200. Right, this, yeah, this, I, I well, kind of caught parts of it. To push is rather than people assuming a single thing in terms of trying to address whatever kind of home efficiency. Uh, agendas they may have, uh, you know, if we can get people to incorporate, you know, two measures or three measures, for instance, a heat pump change out and dump repair, right, right, right. So we incentivize that also because everybody is bigger bang for the expense. Can I have a question? So you're showing how you this, but you want to actually be putting that out in the page. I leave it apart. You know, they say, the less you say, the better. But, um, there's also a certain intuitive connection for you. Now, if, you if you've got something that can operate on 2,200 watts as opposed to 4,500 watts and meet your demand, then, you know, at about half, half the demand, the electrical demand, that would convey you about half the cost. So if, uh, um, whether we are ever going to put that in print, I don't know. That would be something more that the manufacturer would probably be willing to or, or more uh, <coughs> obliged to provide. The question now is, what is the life expectancy of the heat pump water heater? Yeah, so I can answer that. Um, the life expectancy of the of pretty much across the board of manufacturers is the same life expectancy as a standard electric tank. Um, the the warranty periods um, with each of the manufacturers heat pump water heaters differs a little bit, um, but the tank life expectancy from what all the manufacturers have told me is about uh, 15 years, 15 to 20 years. The the part of the the heat pump water heater that is going to experience the most. Uh, wear and tear and likely uh, need to be fixed or replaced a little bit sooner than that would be, of course, the heat pump itself. Uh, and the life expectancy of those is it's about 10 to 15 years. Uh, but those are e more easily serviceable and, uh, you know, wouldn't uh, and can be 
uh, replaced and worked on um, while while connected to attached to the heat pump water heater itself. Uh, so the question is, is there a particular brand uh, that we have had success with? So the programs that I have been involved in, I mean, we're, we're very brand neutral in our approach. Uh, we have partnered with specific manufacturers on promotions across a specific region uh, in the Northwest uh, U.S. Um, but, you know, we, we've seen success with all of the brands. Um, I mean, the, the, the big brands obviously are the GE Geo Springs, uh, A.O. Smith, and all of its kind of co-branded uh, brands. So, like, they, they kind of co-brand under the Kenmore State Reliance uh, brand as well. And then uh, the third big brand that we've um, in, in been involved with is Air Generate. Um, and they're a smaller uh, manufacturer of a heat pump water heater. The question here is how many years have they been installing the heat pump water heater in the Northwest? Uh, so we've, we've, our program's been around for about three years. Um, we've seen a, a huge spike uh, in installations and product movement within the last uh, about well, year and a half. So I guess the beginning of last year is when we started to see a lot of installations. And that kind of coincided a lot with the efforts of utilities in the Northwest and our programs that we've been working on as well. Another, another brand, too, that is uh, coming out with an uh, upgraded, updated, I guess, not upgraded, updated model is uh, Ream. Uh, they're coming out with a new uh, uh, upgraded uh, heat pump water heater. I've been a lot of trouble with the filter. I think most customers, when they install a water heater, they don't want to worry about it. <coughs> and there's a lot of complaints, you know, when people come and they take the filter or clean the filter. It, it looks like something else. Um, so the question has to do with uh, the filters on the heat pump water heaters and any complaints that customers have had about uh, frequency of changing them. Um, we, I, we haven't heard as a, from a program standpoint about customers having problems with them. Uh, the filters on them don't, uh, aren't designed to need to be changed. They're just meant to be uh, removed and either vacuumed off or rinsed off under like a faucet or blown out, I guess, with compressed air as well. Um, so they're, they're, you don't have to actually uh, purchase a replacement uh, for those filters unless, of course, there is like a tear or something like that. What's the cleaning frequency? Uh, the frequency, okay. so, so yeah, so different manufacturers have obviously different requirements, but they range anywhere from once every, you know, two months to once every two years. Um, so there's quite a big range in there depending upon the manufacturer. And the access points for those on the different heat pump water heaters are, are pretty simple to access. Um, you know, some are just uh, accessed via unclipping the filter itself. Others you have to actually, you know, have a screwdriver and unscrew a, a panel and then access the filter that way. Uh, there's a follow-up question it looks like with the, um, whether a clogged filter drives up the cost of equipment operation. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the more the more blocked the filter uh, becomes, the harder the the harder the heat pump has to work um, to generate heat and move that air. Um, you know, so that would you know decrease the overall performance of the heat pump water heater. Uh, but across the board, um, all the manufacturers have stated that in their product testing, um, they have blocked their filters up to about 90% blockage, and uh, there's only a minimal uh, decrease in performance. The question is, if they are already a trade ally on the heat pump side of our rebate program, will they need to complete the trade ally participation agreement form for the water heater? The, the participation agreement or just the, um, the actual contract itself? Is that the water heater trade out our application and agreement Herman had here today for us to hand out? Right, right. If they're already signed up under um, 
our program, then they would not. That really what we're specifying there is is if, until next year, we'll we'll eventually our goal is to move. Um, everyone under the same umbrella. However, with this being a later launch, we had to uh, bridge the gap, so to speak, between the remainder of the year until next year. So if, if they are already signed up and actively participating um, and attended our annual meeting and, and covered, then um, we'll just need to note that. That way when we set up online um, our list of uh, trade allies that are certified to it or you know participate in our heat pump water heater, we can add them to that list as well. That way they show up on multiple um, multiple lists. Um, the question is, will there be a list like we have for the heat pump dealers when a customer calls Sandy Cooper and asks about getting a replaced um, water heater being a heat pump um, water heater, will they have a list that we will give out to customers with their names on it? Yes, all the all those that sign up, but we haven't specified an exact cutoff date yet. Um, we'll probably extend this for a few weeks to see uh, for those that couldn't make the presentation today about um, offering it again. However, um, everyone who has signed up will be specified as our certified in installers. Um, for this program, and, and all of our referrals will be driven to uh, that list, just like we do on the, um, the weatherization or um, HVAC side as well. And that's something that we've had some success with is just uh, within whatever organization that they've got uh, participated in, someone who handles this, this kind of thing, they've got weather from the air and everything. They understand the, the ins and outs of the application, what's important to, to provide. Uh, that seems to really move the uh, administrative side of it. The question is, what are the next steps that our trade allies sitting in the room who want to participate should be expecting? Well, first and foremost, um, after this meeting, depending upon the schedule and how quickly, obviously getting signed up with our program to participate, to install um, heat pump water heaters is the first step. And then after that, we'll be reaching out and whether it be feedback we can gather today, um, communicating and, and, and brainstorming, you know, marketing outreach that we want to um, pursue moving forward with. Um, but essentially, it's pretty straightforward after, after today or as quickly as um, those that are signed up will begin adding uh, those trade allies to the list um, and they will be, you know, approved to to, to begin or, you know, right now currently obviously we, we had not had anything set up uh, specifying, but there will be a cutoff where um, homeowners looking to install uh, these water heaters will have to come from our one of our approved lists. So, um, and, and keep in mind this, is, you know, not everyone in the room today, um, you know, may look at this and and say this is this fits their model, or the, you know whether it be insurance restrictions. But you know if there is something uh, we're we're willing to look into it. Um, what we've come, you know, there, we don't have much wiggle room as far as um, insurance restrictions. But if there's anything else, you know, we can definitely work for. But um, really, the process we we were trying to eliminate really any barriers, and it hopefully will be pretty straightforward with everyone once they're signed up and. Um, but as far as a cutoff, um, we have not determined a date yet. We want to give everyone um, adequate time and, and be fair and equitable to um, those that you know maybe had restrictions today and could not make it and reach out to um, some of those that couldn't uh, to make sure. Okay. 
um, before we do indeed um, implement a cutoff. And is there an end date for the for the rebate? All of our rebates run um, really from annually, but however, ours are, are not at the very end of the year. All, all the projects need to be um, submitted. Uh, applications need to be submitted by the end of October and installed by the middle of November. Um, so November 15th, really, of each year is when uh, the new program uh, year starts. And currently, to date, we don't have any um, plans to uh, cancel or have seen anything that would would cause us immediately to cancel this program. So, um, again, it's scheduled to run through the end of this uh, through the end of this year and continue to, uh, for next year as well. Are there any other questions? And in the interest of um, keeping to this time commitment, because I know we have a couple um, presenters that are in two different time zones, and I don't know as far as meeting uh, meeting notices y'all have coming up. But if there are any other questions, um, you know, please direct those to us, whether it be today or um, you know in the days to come. And and as I um, specified, and we all you know we, we want this program to be as successful as possible. So your feedback is um, critical uh, for us to really find the best channels and uh, just to to explain just one example, a lot of times when we um, are involved in so much of the details and not really thinking outside and putting ourselves in our contractor's uh, viewpoint, one of the things that came up last year is you know, our, our promotions and our timing of our heat pump tune-ups. And so we've, we've tried to work to adjust that to make sure we're not um, putting out materials and, uh, and sending a message to homeowners that, you know, in the middle of July when uh, a lot of the contractors are overloaded. So as much feedback as we can have about, you know, finding the best channels or recommendations that you all may have, um, we're here to listen and help, and we want this to be successful not only for you all uh, and your business and, and hoping to upsell those homeowners who are, um, you know, not looking at this advanced technology, but also help us, uh, help us save energy as well. Great, and there was one more question that came through, Grayson, and that was, uh, do contractors send the rebate paperwork to the energy advisors or the uh, energy support services department in general? That, that could really um, really be in, in many different ways. Um, really, whatever works best for um, you all, I don't know. Um, you know, obviously the, the quickest path would be to um, to avoid sending it in to to have a you know partner with the energy advisor maybe in your area where you're installing these um, and they're all divided um, by service territory so um, really having that faxed over or emailed and scanned over um, is a pretty quick process and um, however our energy advisors and our energy support services side can um, you know collect this information um, and and put it into our uh, database so. Thank everyone for their time, and uh, especially I want to thank Josh for um, working with our schedule, um, and especially being across the country. And uh, thank Jordan as well. Oh, no problem. My pleasure. All right. Thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Right. Bye. Bye.